Before we get into the main topics of this course, let's review some of the power to arrest manual that each security officer was required to learn and successfully test on before being employed as a security officer. It is important to remember that as a security officer, you are not a peace officer and do not have the same job duties as peace officers. You don't have the same training or the same powers as a peace officer, according to the law. Remember that any security officer who pretends or even implies that he is a peace officer is committing a crime. A person who is found guilty of impersonating a peace officer could be punished by a fine and or a county jail sentence and his registration may be denied or revoked. A security officer's role should be to protect people and property for his employer. That means specific people and property. A security officer's responsibility before an incident or an offense has occurred should be prevention. A security officer's responsibility during or after an incident or offense has occurred should be to observe and report. So remember, before an incident, you prevent. After or during an incident, you observe and report. The major responsibility of a security officer should be prevention before an incident occurs. Thus, a security officer should be highly visible. By being seen, the security officer may discourage anyone who might be considering theft, damage, or personal injury. A security officer's job focus should be prevention. In order to do that job well, the security officer must first be alert, listen, and watch. Now remember that the absence of incidents or offenses is one sign that a security officer is doing a good job. If an incident or an offense should occur while you're on duty, you should not immediately intervene. Instead, you should stay calm, observe and remember events, report to the police or your supervisor or both depending on your employer's policy. And then remember that a security officer is privately employed to protect specific people and property. Peace officers are law enforcement officers, uh, and they are people like the sheriffs, deputies, uh, constables, marshals, members of city police forces and other officers whose duty is to enforce the law and preserve the peace. If a law is violated, peace officers are required to pursue and apprehend the person responsible. This is not required of a security officer. At no time are you required to pursue and apprehend. A lot of times in the security field, we're going to come in contact with the local police. Uh, now, your job is made a lot easier if you have a good working relationship with the police officers that respond to your scene. Uh, how do we make sure that we have a good relationship with them? Well, the first thing is to never play cop. You don't have the training for it. You don't have the legal authority to do the same things as a peace officer. And also playing cop may antagonize the local law enforcement and hurt your company's working relations with them. Not to mention that impersonating a peace officer is a crime. Now, if you do have the training, if you are a peace officer, then remember that while you are working as a security officer, you have to follow your department's policies. The next thing is do not mislead people. Remember that because of your uniform, your badge, your hat, other gear that you have on, your duty belt, uh, some people may think that you're a peace officer. Don't do anything to encourage this false idea. Whenever the opportunity arises, in fact, make it a point to let them know that you are not a peace officer, but a security officer. During an emergency, you may not interfere with peace officers who may be on the scene even if they are on private property of your employer or client. You must cooperate to the extent possible with these peace officers or you may be subject to arrest. Penal Code Section 150 addresses aid to a peace officer and if someone is 18 years of age, uh, physically fit, and a peace officer's life is in danger, then citizens must render aid to the peace officer. This is called passe comitatus. Now, a security officer is an agent of the owner of the private property and in this role can exercise the owner's right to ask people on the property what they are doing there, who they are, etc. 
If they refuse to answer the questions or if their answers are not satisfactory, the security officer may ask them to leave. If they refuse to leave, the security officer may arrest them for trespassing and should call local law enforcement without unreasonable delay. When on private property and not employed as a security officer, your authority is no greater than any other person's. On the other hand, your authority to question people is greater on property where you are on duty as a security officer. The owner of the property has the right to establish certain rules on his property that may not be part of the penal code. For instance, if an employee shows up for work drunk, he may be violating a company rule. The client may want the employee sent home or may intend to fire the employee. How the situation is handled is between the employer and the employee and has nothing to do with the police or public law. A security officer must know what the employer's policy state. I remember that trying to enforce company policy could, however, result in a violation of public law by you or by the employee. For example, if the employee is asked to leave and refuses, he may be arrested for violating the public law against trespassing. On the other hand, if the security officer uses unnecessary force in removing the employee from the premises, the security officer may be arrested for committing assault or battery. As a security officer acting as a representative of the owner on the owner's private property, you can physically prevent a person from entering an area, but only as a last resort. Be sure to check with your employer regarding the way to handle a violation of company rules, as well as how to handle violations of certain laws. Now, the very nature of security work requires security personnel to be constantly aware of their surroundings, the law, and the mission of private security in today's society. Three factors to consider when making timely and reasonable decisions are facts, laws, and policies. Consider the facts involved in the incident. The facts of any incident will be learned by answering the following questions. Who, what, when, where, how, and possibly why. Consider the laws. What laws may apply to the incident? Has a city, county, state, or federal law been violated? Consider any policy that might apply to the incident. What is the policy of your employer regarding this incident? Actions based on poor judgment can lead to legal problems. You must, by law, avoid certain actions, and we're going to talk about that later in the course.